All right, and we're back. I didn't expect to be making this one so soon. Soon after the Ex Libra 25 Summer Solstice release, which was the first major release in the new Ex Libra fork, we discussed in the previous video the release itself and what came of it, including new container isolation, security patches, the dropping of Ex Lib for Ex Nest, and ABI separation for multiple driver versions. And now we are actually seeing Ex Libre being proposed on Fedora. And we had a quick response on that. So we're gonna be getting into this all today. Buckle up because this is gonna be a fun ride. So first off, just to start with some broader context, as Xorg is suffering with barely being maintained at this point in favor for Wayland, as there are a few contributors left and the project hasn't seen any real progress over the last few years. Ex Libre's goal here was to be a new fork that promised cleaner, more maintained code with new features and a continuation of Xorg, all stemming from an Xorg contributor named Enrico, who was actually ejected from the free desktop.org platform after violating the code of conduct. Although we don't know exactly why they were ejected, we do know that he has strong anti-Red Hat comments and decided to make his own fork. And while most users on Fedora are actually now on Wayland, there are use cases where old and unmaintained projects that aren't ported over to Wayland or can't be used on X Wayland, or perhaps even NVIDIA driver users that struggle on Wayland still need Xorg. And if that's not being actively developed, well, that's a potential reason to go over to X Libre. Although it's a brand new project, the X Libre official release was just a few days ago, June 21st. And that's why it's so surprising that a change proposal was made in what is the graphical backbone of Linux desktops, the display server, and the proposal here was to take X11 Libre and make it a part of Fedora 43, which is a wild undertaking. In some sense, it does feel like this is a good choice for Fedora as, as it is a leading edge distribution, often known for being at the forefront of changes in Linux, especially when you consider Enrico is accusing Red Hat and IBM of, of attempting to abandon Xorg and even quote unquote censoring contributions, which of course garnered a lot of attention to the project, not just for the fork or the code, but the drama and the conduct behind the main maintainer himself. Again, that garnered a lot of attention and out of that attention, this proposal came, which was actually overall a pretty thoughtful proposal as it really laid out why Ex Libre might be a good choice for Fedora to undertake. But things started out on the wrong foot here as Ex Libre is completely in its infancy and has not practically existed for more than a few days. Why would a distribution take on such a roller coaster? And in this proposal, the summary here is to replace Xorg X11 server with the X Libre X server as an actively maintained fork. The beginning of this is a disclaimer, which is kind of interesting. The change owner does not share or endorse Upstream's political views, given those can be found even in the Upstream project wide. Read me, the change owner feels obligated to make this clarification. Kevin here is the one who made this proposal and goes on to say that the targeted release for this change proposal would be Fedora Linux 43, which we're coming up on. That would be a massive undertaking. The detailed description here, we're gonna read through, but before we do, if you enjoy content like this, make sure to subscribe below as YouTube can get finicky. Also on your way back up, smash that like button so it gets out to more people. The detailed description here for the proposal goes a long, Time has passed since the major release of Xorg X11 server. Even bug fix releases become rare. Therefore, the change proposes replacing nearly unmaintained upstream with a maintained fork, the X11 Libre X server. And overall, I think this is quite exaggerated. This unmaintained upstream with a maintained fork, merely saying that Enrico's new X11 Libre is quote unquote maintained. Well, I'd say it's new. We haven't seen enough come through in the fork as maintenance really involves a lot of trust, testing, and collaboration of multiple maintainers, all which are currently lacking in the X Libre. So poor argument to start the proposal, but nonetheless, an overall a decent proposal, as even the community did praise the fact that this user went above and beyond making a wonderful proposal, whereas most proposals that are put forth in Fedora are actually lacking much of the context needed in order not only to support the claims, but to also be well-written. Regardless, this did not last long as the community took hold and started discussing this proposal change, which was Fedora 43 change proposal, X11 Libre system wide. This again is a repost on the Fedora channels, but that's not what we're interested in. We're really looking at the comments to see what the Fedora community thought. To start things out, given the questionable changes made by Xorg by the lead only question mark, as in 
Enrico might be the only person really working on things, developer of the X11 Libre before being removed from the project, including possible license violations. I do not think following that individual's fork is a good idea. A bunch of patches of dubious quality and or legality doesn't really mean actively maintained. Anybody can fork something and make a bunch of commits. Strong start here by Chris. Moving on. For the fork of all of our sanity, I really appreciate if Fesco could describe on this only really quick and avoid what could be the most unpleasant flame fest on this mailing list. Signed off, Richard. I appreciate the thought, but I don't think it's a good idea to short circuit our processes. At least one week between announcement and proposal being forwarded to Fesco is mandatory. And looking at the discussion threads, it looks like the I-686 proposal is more of a flame fest anyway. And we get into some other thoughts here. This isn't a real suggestion, is it? The fork is two weeks old and has nobody competent enough to maintain the X server working on it. If Kevin parallel packages X11 Libre for three to four Fedora releases and upstream demonstrates competency, some release processes, bug fixes, and CVE handling across the next two years or so, then it might be reasonable to submit a level of change. So far, this fork is a bunch of patches that break stuff, reverts that kind of fix after the point. Just because someone says they're maintaining XORG fork doesn't mean that XORG fork is maintained well enough to switch a distro to it. I strongly recommend Fesco to vote against this at this time. And instead, Kevin, do the work to show the proposal might make sense in three to four release times. And Kevin, the one who actually wrote out the proposal, talks about the license violations, are actually moving a few lines of mostly trivial declarations from one header file to another without copying the copyright notice. As talked about in a different discussion, and we keep going on and on, the general sentiment here is cautious and of course, one of rejection. The overall tone from Kevin is optimistic and really trying to push a positive ex libre sentiment, but the overall community, at least on the Fedora side of things, is overwhelmingly against the adoption of ex libre at this time at least. Key stakeholders and developers express deep skepticism for both the technical reasons, including things like an immature project and introducing potentially unstable code, all the way up to legal concerns leading into a clash of trust and values overall. And it didn't take long before the next move happened. But before we get there, if you want to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and mind map all at SavvyNick.com. Check it out today to get your sheets. And I believe this strong rejection actually caused this proposal to blow up. As Kevin wrote, Considering the overwhelmingly negative feedback, I am hereby withdrawing the change proposal. The reason is twofold, so we get some reasoning here. I have always argued that changes that are overwhelmingly rejected by the community should not be approved by Fesco, so it would be very hypocritical if I attempted to push this through over the almost entirely negative feedback. I stand by my positions and also apply them to myself. Two, at this point, I believe this has no chance of being approved by the Fesco for Fedora 43, so I do not want to waste everyone's time by continuing this discussion that is not leading anywhere. Signed off, Kevin. I think it's appreciated by most that Kevin realizes that this push might have been a little too hard, at least for Fedora 43. We need more maturity out of the project if it's going to gain any traction on distributions. It is Fascinating to see that there was an attempted proposal to add Ex Libre already into one of the main distributions that, well, a lot of technical people and developers use trying to stay on the bleeding edge of things. Regardless, the red flags mainly raised by the community was trust in the maintainer, questionable license handling, a lack of maturity as the project's only two weeks old, and testing as there are serious breakage and stability concerns currently. Again, we read comments like, just because someone says they are maintaining a fork doesn't mean it's ready. So even though that this proposal is now dead for Fedora 43, it does raise broader questions. As we saw the first release of the X Libre project, here on the repository page, there are a few questions to answer. As what happens when legacy infrastructure and systems become unmaintained? The Xorg X11 server still underpins a lot of systems and workflows to this day. And since it seems stagnant and bug fixes are rare, will we see Ex Libre take the responsibility on to cover these types of systems? Although there are many releases and years for this project to gain its trust from users, there's probably going to be a few niche distros that pull in this display server before long and start testing things. That's when we'll really start seeing how well this fork will work when the upstream seems to refuse making changes in order to give us Wayland. As Ex Libre's maintainer seems technically capable, 
we'll see how they hold up with managing a large project like this with multiple maintainers and contributors as they join his team. Hopefully he is able to get people and we'll see because even though you're technically capable, having a controversial background doesn't always help trust in a project, which it ultimately leaves to the adoption of the project in key areas like distribution. There has to be a lot more test as it is barely just two weeks old. Only time will tell if this fork is a positive or negative over the next couple of years as will it add fragmentation or will it actually help bring together new development for X11? Even though Fedora won't be adopting X Libra at this time, the underlying questions of whether or not to adopt into a distribution are gonna keep resurfacing. I just didn't think it would be this quickly that we would get, well, both a proposal to put it into a massive Linux distribution, but two, how quickly the community was to say no. I mean, those only happened about a day in between, between the proposal and the no, with the main proposal drafter actually rescinding the proposal. Definitely didn't see this coming as dropping as soon as my other video about the X Libre 25 Summer Solstice release, the first major release. Go check that one out now if you're interested in more of the X Libre story and drama. But what a ride we just took as we navigate through one of the most chaotic forking events in recent memory, as it's exploded onto the community seam as a firestorm at this point, the deeper questions are going to be about maintenance, trust, legacy tech, and which display servers we're going to be using in order to shape the future of desktops. And people are still trying to stay away from that readme file for the X Libre project. At this point, I think it's garnered enough attention to be rewritten. Let me know what you think. As the saga, I'm sure we'll continue, we'll be covering it. So don't forget to subscribe below, smash that like button on the way back up and catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.